Hello! Today I am going to be sharing with you my daughter's year 8 curriculum. We are in the UK, we home educate using the Charlotte Mason philosophy and I'm just going to show you what my daughter is going to be learning, how we're going to be learning it and how her week is kind of structured in terms of time to get it all done. My daughter is 12 and she has been home educated for just over two years and I would say it's really taken that long for her to fully grasp and take ownership of her own learning, her own education and to really be independent. <laughs> so first of all I want to share with you what she's learning and how and then in the second part of this video I'm going to just talk about her timetable, her schedule so we can see how we actually structure her time to get everything done. Every day my daughter does a five minute lesson on Typing Club, again before breakfast. She also reads a poem. This year she is going to be working through the Ambleside Online Poetry for Year 6 and she's starting off with Robert Frost. She just has to read the poem so that she gets familiar with the style of writing of each of the poets. Every day all my children do recitation and we do this over breakfast. On a Monday they might do a poem, on a Tuesday they might do song lyrics, on a Wednesday they might do Shakespeare, it just depends on how things go. But I've got all my recitations in this folder and so all they have to do is stand up and read it. And recitation is all about learning to communicate clearly, articulately and also just by repetitively speaking the same poem week in week out it goes into your long-term memory. Every day she also does copy work. She does this before breakfast and we use the Copywork Cave program. I created this myself because I wanted something that my children could just open every morning, look at and do it and they didn't need me to help organize them. So my daughter who's 12 is doing level 3 and she is doing collection 1 this term. So for example as part of that she will be copying excerpts from Hamlet, um, the full text of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, various poems and Treasure Island. So she does that every morning for about 10 minutes. I'll put a link in the description below, copyworkcave.com, check it out. <laughs> every day she also does maths and we're using Khan Academy. She is doing the grade 7 on Khan Academy which does correspond roughly to year eight and she does that really independently if she struggles she does come and ask for help but to be honest she's now at that level where I'm not sure I can help her that much but I just coach her really on how to go about learning for herself so that she understands all that she's learning in maths. Life skills. Now, this is really important to me. It's so great having my kids around all the time because we have so many good conversations about life skills. And my husband is great too at just getting the children involved with what he is doing and passing on life skills. But also intentionally, we're looking at a couple of things this year. Pressing the right buttons. This is all about people skills and personality types. My daughter will really enjoy this book. I am passionate about financial literacy so she will be working through Rich Dad Poor Dad and all the study sections as well. She'll also be reading How to Be Your Own Selfish Pig. <laughs> she's also growing in cooking, baking, does that kind of thing quite regularly and this year she's really going to be taking her growing of plants to another level. She's really enjoyed growing some vegetables. This year I really want to make that even more of a focus for her because she really enjoys it. So let's start with languages, shall we? My daughter is currently learning four languages simultaneously, not all to the same degree, but she does Spanish every day on Duolingo, first thing in the morning before breakfast, five to 10 minutes. She also does Latin. We do this once a week. She does it with her sister and a friend of hers who is a few years ahead in Latin who just really enjoys teaching it, so that's great. She's also learning Hebrew and that's something that we're doing as a family. We're taking it really slow because it's a lot more complex than just learning another language with the same letters that we use in English. So we've learned all the basic letters of the Hebrew alphabet and we then just learn phrases. So this month we are learning the Shema. which So I just print off a sheet and she copies it out and practices it. Once a week we do an art appreciation lesson. This is about five to ten minutes. Each kind of term we take a different artist. We're starting with Leonardo da Vinci. Next term we will be studying Raphael. 
How I do this is really simple. So I just generally get hold of a book. I found this one at a National Trust bookshop for two pounds. <laughs> And we'll just take one painting or picture, drawing, whatever it is, and we'll just silently study this for two minutes. And then I will close the book and we will talk about it and see if they can explain to me what it is the painting was about and just what we noticed. So it's really just observing and then discussing. We're continuing our art history as well with the story of art. I'm reading this alongside my daughter and her sister. We do this together. We'll be starting that in term two. In terms of practical art, we do a lot of watercolour, we do some acrylics, we do drawing, sketching, and then a friend of ours has got this fantastic art studio, and at least once a month I will try and take all the children there and we will get to try a different form of art with her. She's a fantastic artist and you know it's really key to just pull in other people who are experts and who are passionate about their subject and I don't have to feel passionate about everything. <laughs> I just have to know where to find people who can help inspire my children and that's what I do with art. Let's move on to nature study. We try and do this once a week, sometimes once a fortnight. We love the John Muir Laws method of nature journaling in which you take an object or a specimen, something in nature, and you try and sketch it and then you look at what you can observe about it and then we journal three aspects i notice i wonder it reminds me of and this is all about developing observation all the different things you notice asking questions i wonder and then drawing connections it reminds me of and this is really the core of the scientific method and the scientific way of thinking so i love this because it's just instilling in my children that way of thinking whilst also getting them up close and personal with nature. You can see here this week we just did some carrots we dug them up out of our garden and my daughter she drew the carrots these two happened to be entangled together. And last year she started working through this book book of common birds each week she just took a different bird she sketched the bird and then she wrote down all sorts of information about the diet migration feeding habit, Latin name, and she's just going to continue working through that book this year. Connected to nature study, this year she will be doing some astronomy. We're using this atlas to help us. So once a month when it's clear skies and a very pale moon, we're going out onto the field and we are actually looking for different stars, different constellations. We've already managed to spot quite a few actually and it's so empowering when you've learned some of these constellations and you walk out and you see them in the sky. And my goal really is that by the end of the year she would be able to look anywhere in the sky and be able to identify the key stars and constellations. Once a month when we have finished our observation of the stars she will come back and actually map them in her nature journal. We're also taking a slightly different tack with astronomy this year as well and we are working through the witness of the stars which looks at the really ancient names, the Hebrew, the Arabic, the Egyptian names of the different stars and constellations, the different pictures, what they might mean and this is coming from a particularly Christian theology perspective. It's a really fascinating book. So she'll be drawing all the different constellations and really coming to grips with their meaning. Sticking with astronomy, she's also going to be looking at three different biographies this year of different astronomers. We're using The Great Astronomers by R.S. Ball book as our basis, and I believe she's starting with Ptolemy and then Copernicus. Biographies. She's starting with Marie Curie as her first biography. Later, she will be doing Abraham Lincoln, and she'll be reading I Am Malala. We're also studying Plutarch. He was an ancient biographer of significant men from ancient Rome and ancient Greece. This year we're going to be looking at the lives of Demosthenes, Cicero and Pericles. All of these are people that my daughter's already read about from Story of the Romans or Story of the Greeks or just some novels, particularly the Roman mystery series. So she's already got a bit of a grasp on these. It's quite heady. It's quite complex but it's also a really good way of learning about citizenship and statecraft. I'm going to show you quite a lot of books today and I don't want you to think that she spends all her time just reading. These books are carefully selected and a lot of them are from the Ambleside online curriculum. They are living books. They bring the subject to life. They are not just textbooks. And after every scheduled reading, 
she has to narrate back to me either verbally or written or in some art form what she has taken away from it. So she learns through that process of narrating back and telling back what she has just been reading about. If you've been around my channel a little while, you might know that we love history. I love the Ambleside Online curriculum as a starting point for history. Core to the Charlotte Mason approach, and to be honest, probably the classical education approach, is learning history chronologically, or at least being able to place things chronologically. So she has a book of centuries. It just looks like this. Uh, each century has its own spread and whenever she learns anything and anything that we've read she writes down when that happened. It just really builds up the bigger picture of what was going on in each century. Link below where I got that document from. It's free. You can print it at home and make your own. She is working through the historical writings readings for Ambleside Online Year 7 and this is a lot of original historical documents. A lot of it is early British history but it also includes a biography of King Alfred, it includes an early account of the Battle of Hastings, also some eyewitness accounts of the Crusades. We are focusing on British history this year and she's working through Winston Churchill's Volume 1 of the History of the English-Speaking Peoples, The Birth of Britain. It's all going in. This week, she and I were reading about the Roman invasion, the attempted Roman conquest of Britain and how the early Britons fought back. And a number of the Roman generals that were here, she had already heard about, she already knew something about them from other books that she had read. And so she was really able to just draw connections naturally. She will also be working through Story of Britain by R.J. Unstead, which is a much lighter read. <laughs> Another really story-based history book she's going to be working through this year is The Daughter of Time, which is all about the story of Richard III. She's also working through Saints and Heroes, which is a church history book, and each week she's just looking at the life of a different person and then writing a narration about them. She's tackling Scotland and England this year in a narrative history book called In Freedom's Cause. That's all about William Wallace, Robert the Bruce, and the English She's also finishing reading Story of the Romans. Finally, for history, as a family, we're working through volume three of Story of the World, and this year I decided to invest in the activity book, which I think was fantastic. I've got a second-hand copy of that, which is a lot cheaper. For every chapter, there is a printable map, there is coloring in sheets, there is questions to really draw out, have the children comprehended what we've been learning, and then there's hands-on activities, arts, crafts, baking. Last week we were learning about the Spanish and how they really took a lot of natural resources out of South America, and we had a go at creating our own gold mine. It was so much fun. Shakespeare. So, Every term we take a different play and then once a week she does a Shakespeare lesson for 20 minutes. This term we're doing much ado about nothing. I've already read to all the children a kind of story form and then once a week she is taking the text, she is reading several scenes and she's also listening to a dramatic audio recording to, just to hear real actors speak this play. And then she writes a narration down of what happened in each scene. Shakespeare's also covered in her recitation and in her copy work. So she's reading it, speaking it, and writing it. Also for poetry, she is doing a lesson once a week from this book. It just has 30 short lessons that tackle a different aspect of poetry. Metaphors, similes, alliteration, rhyme, all sorts of different things about poetry. She also has to write some poems as part of this program. Literature. So it's all about the classics with us. She is starting with Watership Down and she is narrating this in a cartoon strip. She's reading Ivanhoe. This I started reading with her today is very complex. This is easily a GCSE level text, but it also really gives great insight into medieval England. Also be reading Beowulf and she is reading the history of English literature for Boys and Girls by H.E. Marshall. Also for literature, she is going to be starting Chaucer, but we're doing a story version first rather than the original text. We'll start the in term three and she will do a different tale, such as the Canterbury Tales, each week. In addition to copy work, which she does every day, she also does dictation once a week, which is all about crafting that writing ability. We use the copy work cave 
curriculum for that. We just take a passage, she will study it, see if there are any words that she's not confident in until she can visualize that word in her mind. And she will also study the punctuation. Then I close it and I read aloud, I dictate, and she has to write it all down and then check, did she spell everything correctly? Did she punctuate it correctly? She actually really enjoys this and I do it with her sister at the same time to save time. Every month or two, I also give her a book that she can just read in her free time. Next couple of months, she's gonna be working through the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Moving on to science now. So again, we're using a lot of living books for science. This year, she is starting meteorology and we are using Eric Sloan's weather book. This book's got loads of pictures and diagrams. So it's quite an accessible book, although it does cover loads and loads of content. She's also reading The Wonder Book of Chemistry by Jean-Henri Fabre, and this is a real living book about chemistry. She's reading a book called Secrets of the Universe. We access this online, it's free, and this is really looking at physics. We're also gonna pick up again the sea around us, but we are borrowing a copy of the Young Readers Edition. We started with the adult version and it kind of made her brain smoke a bit. So I've got a Young Readers version. I can't show it to you, but I know she's gonna enjoy that one. She's continuing to read It Couldn't Just Happen on the Kindle, which she started last year, and also First Studies in Plant Life. Those books she's gonna be tackling in term two. Once a week, she has a hands-on science lesson. She does it with her sister and hopefully some other friends this year. So there'll be a little group of them doing these science experiments and activities together. We're continuing to work through the big book of science experiments. We are currently doing some physics experiments. In addition to the activity or the hands-on experiment, she keeps a record of the hypothesis, the observations, the conclusions, all that sort of stuff in her folder. Crossing over from science into geography, later this year she's going to be working through this book, which is all about geology. Once a week she will do a map drill. She's continuing to use the World Geography Games. But I've also got this wonderful book, The Ordnance Survey Puzzle Book, which is all about interpreting maps. It's got all sorts of different maps in it, and then it's just got a bunch of questions and the answers at the back. So she's just going to have to learn to get to grips with all these different types of maps. She's also reading The Orient by Richard Halliburton. She's already read The Occident and she's narrating that. Finally, for geography, she is also reading The Brendan Voyage. This is the true story of a group of guys who attempted to recreate the legendary voyage of St. Brendan from Ireland to the Americas long before the Vikings or Christopher Columbus. The legend has it that St. Brendan was actually the first person from the West to get to the Americas and they've recreated his voyage to see if it was possible. She is really enjoying this one. So that is most of the living books that she is going to be working through this year. In addition, we do forest school once a fortnight. She is doing handicrafts. She's been learning to sew. She made a cushion. This term she'll be learning crochet. Also music. So she is learning the piano with Hoffman Academy. Highly recommend it. Also learning different hymns and folk songs at any given time. And what I do is I just create a playlist on YouTube of the different songs that we are learning. And every morning while we're having breakfast, I just have that playing in the background so we subconsciously hear it. And then we learn the lyrics through our recitation. This term we are focusing on the hymns and folk songs of Britain. So I've chosen Jerusalem, Bread of Heaven, which is the Welsh kind of hymn, and Flower of Scotland. We're also doing songs like Land of Hope and Glory, Rule Britannia, just those patriotic folk songs and learning the history behind them. When were they written? What was the social context in which those songs came to be? We'll also be learning about Elgar, who was a famous British composer, and we will be listening to his music. Also add to the playlist some songs in the different languages that we're learning, whether it's Hebrew, Spanish, Te Reo Māori. I haven't found any good Latin songs, but anyway, they just really help to hear the songs in the background. PE, she does swimming lessons every week. She's in a netball team. She does mountain biking and cross country running. And my goal with PE is really just to keep her fit, active, and for her to have fun enjoying exercise. As she grows up into adulthood, exercise and being active is just part of her lifestyle. 
So now let's just talk about scheduling, how we get it all done. So she gets up around seven, she normally feeds her pets, does her chores, which is vacuuming, and then she sits down and does about half an hour of work before we have breakfast at half a state. She does her copy work, her typing, her Spanish, and reading of a poem. And then if she has time after that, she's allowed to check her emails and email some friends. Over breakfast, I read a poem, we do our recitation, we go over our Hebrew and our Maori. After breakfast, we will often do something together, maybe it's the art appreciation, on a Friday after breakfast, we do the story of the world lesson as a whole family. It normally takes between half an hour to an hour. She sits down to do her independent work for about three hours, including a bit of a break, and she will do maths, and she will do between four and five different narrations. And that may include doing something with me, like Plutarch or dictation, or reading a book on her own, reading it with me. After lunch, we generally uh, get out and do something active. So that's when we might do forest school or we might do art or a nature study or swimming. All of that takes place in the afternoons. Now, because she is year eight and she's 12, she then generally does another hour's worth of work in the evening after dinner. She'll do her piano and then she will do another two, sometimes three different narrations after dinner. And I tend to make it the ones that are a little less intellectually demanding. She never does any school work on the weekend, so Thursday evening is when she stops work and she doesn't pick it up again until Monday morning. She never does school work on her birthday or any of her siblings' birthdays and often we get away in our caravan, we do that quite a lot. We do a lot of trips, so hopefully this term we're heading to Stonehenge, we will be going to the Science Museum in London, to the National Gallery. We're going to see some of Leonardo da Vinci's paintings up close and personal. We've also got a really good network now of other friends and families who home educate. And last week we did an athletics day with some other home ed families. Normally once a fortnight there's a different activity that we do. So that is my daughter's year eight curriculum. It sounds like a lot and I have to say the Ambleside Online curriculum is a fantastic place to start and then I brought in other books and resources that I wanted her to have based on who she is as a person and based on what matters to us as a family. And then scheduling is not that difficult. It takes about a couple of hours at the start of the year to get organized and then every week on a Sunday evening I just print off her new schedule for the week and it only takes about five minutes a week to update. So I'm making this video just, just to show how diverse education can be. How, there's 101 ways to educate children, not a one size fits all approach. And so I'm here today simply just to show you, this is how we do it. You will do it your way, but let's share ideas. You can tailor it to suit you as a family, to suit your child.